Good afternoon and welcome to this real world project management webinar, MOT your PPM skills. My name's Lauren Humphrey and I'm part of the membership team here at APM. There's a few housekeeping rules before we get started. Attendees are on mute. This is to avoid disruption. However, you will have a chance to ask questions at the end of today's webinar during the Q&A. Webinar will last for 60 minutes, consisting and concluding with a 30 minute Q&A session. The webinar will be recorded and will become a resource to you on the membership section of the website. Today we're joined by Emma Ruth Anes Pemberton, who is a fellow of the Association for Project Management and also a member of the PMI UK, Spain Chapters and Alexis P. Free M. Free Assessor. Emma has extensive and specialist experience in change management and has a particular focus on collaboration, reminding us that it's important we should be human first and change champions second. During this webinar, we will explore the key skills needed for successful project management and how these skills mature over time and how you will learn how to MOT your own skills to find areas of strength and areas of opportunity. So without further ado, a big thank you to Emma for joining us and I'm pleased to hand over now. Thanks Lauren for that really great introduction. Hi and welcome everybody. Uh, before I say anything else, you will see that we are using Menti today. So if you go to menti.com and use the code 1370227, so it's a little bit of a mouthful, you'll be able to interact with some of the key questions that we've got so we can get to know you a little bit. So we're going to let that go on in the background, so do continue with that. Um, and what I'm going to do now is kick off. So um, as Lauren said, today is all about your PPM skills. Um, if any of you know Wellington, we've been doing an MOT series of events uh, over the from kind of June throughout the summer. And we've been looking at different areas that you can maybe MOT, including the team, uh, the way that you use technology. And today is really about you. So we want to thank the APM for partnering with us uh, on this particular webinar. And I hope you find it really useful. Um, so what are we going to do today? We're going to do introductions in case you don't know who we are or who I am. And we're also going to talk a little bit about successful project managers. We're going to look at specific skills that our MOT tool is going to help you to test. And then uh, we're going to go through the tool itself so that you can, you will receive it after this webinar from the APM. Uh, so you will be able to physically use that document, that tool to give you a result. So my name is Emma Ruth Anna Pemberton. I'm the Director of Consulting Services at a company called Wellington. Um, as Lauren said, I'm a fellow of the APM and I'm also chair of the PMO specific interest group. Uh, I'm involved with all the associations uh, across the world when it comes to project management. So PMI, Spain and UK uh, and IPMA. Um, I'm part of the Innovation and Change uh, SIG as well. At Wellington, I'm Sustainability and Corporate Social Responsibility Lead. So get really, really involved in how project management can give back to the communities. And I run our flagship event, Future PMO, which is our one day conference, uh, which is dedicated for bringing, PM, bringing PMO people together. And I'll tell you a little bit about more what we're going to do this year with that. Wellington, uh, we're a project management consulting and training company. We are based in Windsor in the UK. We have also offices in Dublin and Madrid. And we have partners in Costa Rica who deliver our courses uh, to that market in Latin and South America. We are pretty involved with the industry. Uh, we're pretty unique. So we are the only Microsoft Gold partner that is also APM accredited in the world. And we have a particular interest in the world of PMO. So we're part of the PMO Global Alliance and we have been recently classified as leaders in PMO training. So I wanted to really start off with some stats about project management. And this comes from the PMI's course of the profession this year's 2020, uh, which came out in April or May this year. And what we're finding at the moment is that organizations are still placing a pretty high priority on technical skills. Uh, so the mechanics of doing project management. But what's really interesting is that actually they're expecting more leadership, more business skills, business acumen, emotional intelligence. And we can see that those skills are very, very quickly catching up to the technical skills of project management when we ask people, what do your project managers mean? And this really lends itself to some historical conversations that were going on around the industry some years ago, where we used to ask um, certainly people within who come to our PMO SIG events, what are the key skills? And people quite often said communication and influencing skills are 
some of the most important skills that a project manager can have. And this is starting to really reflect that, the importance of leadership and business skills in the world of project managers. So that's really interesting. Um, and this is partly why we wanted to kind of help you to MOT your own skills and see if there are any areas that you can improve on or any areas that you can lever to maybe help others in your sphere of influence. The MOT tool tests these six areas. So it's going to look at or ask you questions around your stakeholder engagement and communication skills. It's going to also look at scoping and planning, uh, how good you are at that. Also resource and cost management, methods and tools. So how familiar you are with the life cycle that you're using uh, and the tools that you have at your disposal to make that work. Risk issue and change management and also leadership and governance. So across those six areas, the tool, and I will go into it in more detail, the tool will ask you some, or it will give you some statements for you to agree or disagree with across a number of different levels. So what we're going to do now is really go through each of these areas to give you a little bit of an insight into the kind of things that we're looking for. Um, and as Lauren said, if you do have any questions, feel free to put them in the chat. We will endeavor to get through them um, towards the end of this webinar. So the first, a uh, skill set, if you like, that the tool is going to look at are something I've just mentioned around leadership. So project leadership and governance. And it's really about you understanding and having the emotional intelligence or enough emotional intelligence to understand that how you interact with the project, with your team, is really going to either keep the momentum going and the progress going, particularly when we are working across dispersed teams where most of us are still working from home. You, it does impact how your project and your project team perform. So understanding when we need to escalate appropriately uh, versus when we need to manage things ourselves as a team. Between the kind of finding the balance between facilitating meetings and workshops and discussions with the team versus helping them to actually become and stay a little bit more independent. And Understanding the importance of knowledge management. We talk about knowledge management when we think about the technical aspects, we think about lessons learned, but it's much bigger than that. It's bigger than, oh, let's collect some lessons at the end and maybe they'll go into a report or maybe they'll go into a database to be searchable in the future. But what do we do with that knowledge management? This has become really important over this last six months because what we've had is a lot of people go on furlough and a lot of the tacit knowledge for the organization kind of resides in people's brains. So we've missed that because they haven't been allowed to work um, during that time. So understanding the importance and how to bring knowledge management to life in our organizations when it comes to delivering our projects. Communication, emotional intelligence, I've already kind of briefly touched on. It's, it's important that you understand that people need you to communicate in different ways. And we need to adapt as project managers and delivery people, whether your project or program or whatever it is you're delivering, um, it's important that you understand that and that you adapt your style to match the people that you have. Um, and also leadership and management skills. A lot of the work that we do as project managers is really about motivating the team and keeping the team going. So we need to make sure that we're honing those skills nowadays because they are really, really quickly starting to catch up when we ask people about what is important, what is an important skills for project management. So that's project leadership and governance. Next, the second area that the tool looks at is project scoping and planning. So again, understanding what is best practice planning um, in your organization, not necessarily what it says in the book, not necessarily what it says based on all of your experience, but what is appropriate in your organization? At Wellington, we absolutely talk and we do lots of work with best practice, but what we're really looking for when we work with clients is best fit practice. It's taking that best practice and making it fit into our reality because not every organization is the same and the same, something that worked in one organization, even in the same industry, might not work in another. So really trying to reduce the waste, the unnecessary work, so that we can know that our planning is at the right level, it's at the right level of bureaucracy, the right level from a resource management perspective, and really focusing on that minimum standard. What is the minimum 
the level of bureaucracy that we need to do in order to get away from it being complete chaos, but also being seen as this project manager role is all about bureaucracy. Really also looking at things like benefits designs. Are we doing benefits realisation? Um, when I do lots of maturity assessment, benefits is often one of the things that's missing. And sometimes people consider benefit as not being important because we're doing internal projects. But again, it's important to understand that benefits are not just money. It's not just about commercial. By changing anything, we can be adding benefit to our people. And sometimes some of our projects are just about making our people happier. It's just about getting through COVID, and that means that we can measure some kind of benefit. By doing that, we're going to help with the motivation of the team because they feel that they're adding beneficial change, they're making something better. Uh, scope management and understanding the estimating funnel, those are the things that we're going to be looking for in terms of your own skills and MOTing them. Are we baselining our projects? So many people still don't draw a line in the sand when they've planned their project out so that they can actually see what they delivered versus what was the original plan. And that then leads us into the knowledge management conversation. Next is project stakeholders and communication. More now than ever, the ability to manage expectations is fundamental to what we do as project managers or program managers. Now that we are, again, working across dispersed teams, we are finding that some organizations are really struggling with communication and stakeholder management. Other organizations are saying the exact opposite and saying that actually the fact that everybody's available at home makes it easier to talk to each other as teams. So regardless of what situation you're in, the former or the latter, it's really important to understand who it is that you need to speak to on a regular basis, who are your customers, your project manager, you're delivering a set of services, whether that's actually doing the doing on your project or whether that's kind of coordinating everything happening and understand how is it best to talk to them once we know who they are how do we talk to them particularly now because originally it was quite easy to say well we just have a face-to-face -face meeting every week or you know we'd send a newsletter out or whatever and now we have to remember the human side of what we do. We want to and need to and should spend 10 minutes in every meeting just finding out how people are, not assuming that because they're at home, they're having fulfilling and enriching conversations all day long. In fact, the opposite is true for many people. So the ability to identify who our key stakeholders are, who our customers are, and how best to communicate with them is really important. Defining some, some vehicles and some tactics, something new that you're going to do. Maybe you're now using Teams or GoToWebinar or Zoom or whatever the technology is that you've got, is defining what are you going to use for different things. You'll notice we're using Menti today, Menti.com or Mentimeter as it's called in full. That's to kind of, you know, give you something a little bit different that you can get involved with um, as part of this. So trying something new. Uh, to in terms of how you talk to people and I've always said this if any of you have ever heard me talk about knowledge management or anything like that communications are like lessons learned if you half do it it adds no value so if you're going to do a communications plan and you're going to commit to talking to people then commit don't let it go by the wayside because you get busy always make sure that if you're going to do it do it if you are going to half do it don't do it at all it's not worth it The next one is all around project resource and cost management. So according to our research, we do research called the state of project management industry each year. And these two have come up as two of the most difficult processes to embed, along with benefits realization, <laughs> which is probably not very shocking. Uh, and also knowledge management always comes out really high, which I find interesting. But resource and cost management for projects, um, they're both areas that are tricky for a lot of organizations to really nail down, partly because they're moving feasts, you know, that as soon as we try and decide what all our people are doing, something shifts, something moves, somebody goes off sick and the reality changes. And to some degree, the same cost management, many organizations don't have yet the processes 
to really help us with this, this project accounting element. So some of the key things that you need to be aware of as a project manager is not just how to navigate your landscape within your organization, but how best to assign and forecast resources and develop your team so that you can maybe multi-skill them. Also, looking from a financial perspective, you don't have to be a finance person, but you should understand the basics. You should understand how to, if you, your organization doesn't provide it, how can you put something down that's going to help you to look at the cost, at the cost and the project accounting? And also looking at the financial and non-financial benefits. I mentioned earlier, not every project is about a commercial benefit. Sometimes it's just about making our people happier and that's okay. And dealing with conflict management, you know, when it comes to resource and cost, these are two areas where we often see conflict, where it's people are suddenly not available or they're busy on other stuff and or our budgets get flashed or they change because of the situation that's outside of our control. So being able to find a, a clean resolution for anything that comes up with these two. Project resource and cost management, again, two of the most difficult processes to embed successfully in organisations. Next, we're looking at project methods and tools. So PPM, project program management methods and tools, and making sure that as project managers, we understand some of the basic aspects of project management principles, which is going to make us credible. Um, it's going to allow us to help our teams to understand the nuances of project management, some of the key principles between you know, the, the, the concept of having a methodology and the reality. And it's also going to get people to trust us a bit more. Um, again, we are now working in dispersed teams. And one of the real pluses that we've seen from that is that for, for the first time in, in some organizations, we have to trust our people because we can't see them sat at the next bank of desks. So people are being treated a little bit more like adults with having a better home life balance and understanding that they can't necessarily be online nine to five every single day. So, that has changed, but understanding and being able to talk to the ways of working and how we use the tools, why we use the tools that we use, is going to help us again to just be that more, bit more credible. And then we've got you know, the relationship between the project elements, avoiding common reasons why projects fail. Quite often it's because we don't take enough time to plan or we have ginormous scope creep that we can't control. So understanding why projects fail in your organization and doing something about that, kind of preempting that and doing something about it so that that doesn't happen to you. And then the last section is project risk issue and change management. So three kind of sub processes that live amongst all of our projects, our projects. We live in this VUCA world. It's volatile. It's uncertain. It's complex and it's ambiguous. So we only need to look at 2020 to see that. Um, so projects live in a world of risk and change and ambiguity. So it's really important, again, that we understand and we can manage risk management, risks, issues and changes when they come into play. And also making sure that people are comfortable with the change that you're bringing. So not change control so much as change management, making sure that we're holding people's hands when they need it. And we've seen this um, becoming more important due, since the start of the pandemic with the technology element. We now have an insane amount of technology that we're all using all the time on our phones, on our laptops and desktops, etc. And a lot of that is because we all kind of panicked at the beginning. It was like, oh, I need to talk to all these people and everybody was using something slightly different. What that has led to is this huge amount of software that everybody's expected to use, but no one's actually helped people to learn how to use it. So when I talk about PMOs and two PMOs, one of the things I'm saying at the moment is maybe this is something that's important for your organization now is to give people the support that they need in order to understand the functionality. Um, we still have to coach lots of people when we have meetings with them, Mr. Well, you can find, you know, all
moment while we sort out. Can you hear me now? Oh, we can hear you now. Can you hear me now? Yeah, you're back. Hello? Hi, Emma, can, can you hear me? me? Yeah, I can hear you. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you again now. Right, okay. Apologies for that. Uh, not sure how far I got. So I'm just going to continue with risk and issue management uh, for the time being and engage in teams in times of uncertainty. Uh, one of the things that we've done at Wellington is everybody's put into their diary focus time. So rather than just pick up teams and press phone, we're encouraging people to check people's calendars. And if that time is in there and your query isn't super urgent, is, you know, maybe leave it until you know that they're not within that that section of their day. That's helping people because it means that, you know, we're all having a bit of empathy that we're all busy and, um, you know, we all have stuff to do. None of us like distractions. And it's having that foresight to figure out a way that we can engage people in the right way during these times. And also developing change plans for people is really important. We've seen, uh, so Udemy set, set, created some stats saying that they had seen a 200% uptake in online learning. So people are spending a lot of their time uh, working on their skills and their own development um, and their own personal development in many ways. So it's really important that we are supporting our teams um, with those new skills or with helping them to find new skills that they might need. So risk, issue and change management, three sub processes almost that happen but are really, really important and becoming more important every day. Okay, so those are the six kind of groups of skills that this, the tool is going to test for you as part of the MOT. And what I'm going to do now is just, uh, yeah, talk to you about the MOT itself. So it's an Excel, it's free to download. Uh, you are going to get the document if you've been on this webinar um, itself. There's nothing fancy, there's no crazy code that makes things really complicated and you can customize it to your own needs. What we're doing is we're looking, like most competence frameworks, we're looking across two different um, facets. One is your knowledge. So the tool is going to give you um, a statement and each of those statements you're gonna look at or think about through a knowledge perspective and an experience perspective. So from a knowledge perspective, we're looking at, are you aware of this but never really kind of used it? Do you have a good understanding? Are you comfortable with the concepts of that particular statement? Uh, or are you a master? Could you teach others if they asked you for help from a mentoring perspective? And the next lens is around experience. So this is where we're looking at, that's great that you've got the knowledge, but have you ever applied it? So, you know, the options in there are, well, I've used it rarely. It's infrequently, but successfully. So I have done it, um, but it's not something that happens all the time or this is something that I regularly do and I'm quite comfortable with. The scoring is going to give you a perspective per section. So each of those six sections is gonna give you a score. Um, and it's also going to give you a perspective radar so that if you did want to use this, you know, in maybe one of your one-to-ones or upcoming PDRs, you can do that and kind of really show that you are taking seriously your own development. The system will also tell you, or the tool will also tell you if you've done it wrong. So if you've got too many answers, uh, it will pop up red so that it's, it's easier, it's easy for you to fix. And you can create your own action plan. So we've left a space for you to start thinking about, okay, now I know that, you know, maybe uh, like in the example, you can't really see it because it's small, but stakeholder and communication, I know I need to work on that. You can actually create a, an action plan that you can then use to help yourself to improve. One of the things that we do recommend is that you revisit the tool every six months or so, so that you can kind of see progress. That way, we're not just preparing for a marathon and deciding tomorrow we're gonna to run 23 miles. We're kind of putting in milestones, six monthly milestones for ourselves, so that we can see how we are progressing through that journey, just like we do with you know, our PPM roadmaps organizationally. So it's a simple tool, like I said, um, it's it's pretty simple to use. If you do have any questions, you can obviously get in touch with us directly and we'll help you with that. So we will provide you with a link. Uh, and like I say, if you're on this webinar, the tool itself, one of the things I would say is 
it's really easy well depending on your point of view it's really hard for adults to re really reflect on how they're performing we're so focused on the day-to-day -day that we not very we don't very often actually think about how we are performing as individuals so consider your skills really take the time switch off your phone switch off the laptop put focus time in your calendar and really consider and be truthful with yourself that's how you will get something out of this then develop your action plan and then like i say you can always get in touch um, if you want some help or you need some clarification on how all of this works and to help you with um giving you some opportunities to learn um i mentioned future pmo earlier in the session we can't do a face-to-face -face conference for obvious reasons so what we've done is instead we have a week-long learning event for pmo people and project management professionals so there are lots and lots of um courses master classes there's plenty there's like 13 webinars that you can attend there's even networking events um, that you can attend as well so um do go online and have a look at that um because there is literally something for everybody we've got perspectives from different associations which you can see at the top um and we've also got people who you know are deemed masters in their field talking about everything from project management methodologies to PMO to leadership to teams in the new world to the state of project management industry so do have a look at that um, other things that you can do with Wellington is you can visit the Dr PMO clinic so one of the things that we're doing and again we'll provide you with the link um, from today until the 23rd of September you can have 30 minutes free consultancy with me so what we do is we send you a little questionnaire and if you want to bat anything around whether that's how can i uh, how can i improve my skills how can i improve my pmo i'm stuck on which method to use for my organization you can get 30 minutes completely free it's not a sales thing we don't we're very proud to say that all of this kind of stuff that we do that's linked to future pmo is a no sales initiative but it might just give you that 30 minutes to just bounce an idea off somebody um so that you can take you and your pmo to the next level and if you like the individual assessment you might want to take a look at our pmo mot assessment so same thing but instead of looking as at individual skills it's looking at your mot for your whole team so your entire pmo so if you have a pmo uh, you can go online and again you can do it's again in excel there's no code etc etc so that's all I have. Um, as always, stay in touch with Wellington. You can contact me directly if you have any questions on the tool or on any of the aspects of the tool or anything else. Uh, and I'll hand over to Lauren um, for Q&A to see if we have any questions. That's great. Thank you, Emma. We have a question here from Ashok. He said, do you have a link for the free download, please? Um, yes, so um, that will be sent out as part of the email that you will receive from the APM. Uh, but you can always just go to wellington.co.uk and you will find it through there. But like I say, the direct link uh, and the tool will be provided to you via the email that you get from Lauren, well, from APM. <laughs> Perfect, thank you. Yes, I will send that when I circulate the CPT certificates. Cool. Just wait for some more questions to come through. Unless you've covered everything. Oh, we have one here. From <laughs> Maybe. I think people quite often, they want to go and have a play with it and then, yeah, find out if they've got any questions whilst they're filling it in, Maybe We have some here. We have two questions. In your experience, what tends to have the lowest amount of maturity and how do you address that with people? Um, so it really depends on the person and unfortunately there is no one size fits all. Every project management role will be slightly different because each organisation will be different. What we tend to find is that where the organisation is lacking, that's where a lot of the time the people are lacking, especially for people who have come up through the organisation into those roles. So let me give you an example. Many organizations don't do benefits realisation very well. So when we do maturity work and we talk to people about benefits, quite often we find that because they're not exposed to it as part of the day-to-day -day from an organizational perspective, it isn't something that's prominent in their mindset. Um, so we do tend to find that it is quite connected. 
Um, one of the things that I would say is becoming more important is that change management piece. And many project people, including myself, um, certainly back in the day before I did all my NLP stuff, um, I was so focused on delivering that you, I forgot about the people side, which is why if you see anything that I do now, it's all human first, it's hashtag human first. Um, because one of the things that became very apparent to me is that, yes, we've delivered technically, we have delivered lots of projects and things like that. But certainly when you go back, you want to see that it's still adding value. So I think change management is something that's becoming more and more prominent within, uh, within project management skills. But quite often, like I said, we do find that people are lacking where the organisation is lacking. That's great. Thank you. Jo has said that it's been really well presented, knowledgeable, engaging, relevant and succinct. So a big thank you. And I must agree, Emma, Thanks. really good presentation. I've enjoyed listening myself. Ashok has said, how often would you do an MOT? On myself, so on the people skills every six months, uh, on the PMO once a year. So we normally, uh, when we do maturity work, we we tend to do what we call a dip check every year. So we do kind of a big review. We, we create a roadmap with uh, whoever it is. And then a year later, we go and we do what we call a dip check to kind of just see if we're still on the right track. You know, has has the organization changed? Has the environment changed that the organization sits within? Um, so yeah, as from an individual perspective, I would say every six months, just to make sure that you're still focusing on what's important to you because it's not just about what your organization needs, it's also about what you need as an individual. Uh, but then when it comes to the, the kind of team and the roadmap, um, remember that project management maturity at an organizational level is a journey and you're not gonna see huge leaps every six months. So we usually say, do kind of a big one every couple of years, but certainly go in and check every year. That's great, thank you. Catherine has asked if they'll be receiving the slide pack. The webinar is recorded, so you will get a link to the recording of the webinar. Um, Emma, do you have any plans to share the slides at all? Um, yes, yeah, so um, what we normally do is we pop them onto our website as well. So I, they, I, obviously they will be sent to the APM, um, but we normally pop them onto our website as well so that no matter where you, you, know, you search, you can find the information. That's great. Thank you. I will also include that link in my mailing as well. And then Catherine. Uh, Ashok has asked another question. So thank you for that engagement, Ashok. It's um, nice to know that you're interested. Stakeholder mm -hmm. tends to put barriers up that involve anything that means more work for them. What do you suggest to overcome this? It uh, depends on the stakeholder. Uh, there are a number of tactics you can use. <laughs> um, the first, so if they're quite senior people, um, one of the things that I've always what I was told many years ago is find their pain points and take them away. So if you ask them, if you tend to ask people, you know, what, what keeps you up at night when you think about project management, um, people love talking about that stuff, they'll tell you everything. People love talking about, you know, how rubbish things are or what, you know, what bothers them. It's the same as if we go to dinner in a restaurant, we'll never say, I went to dinner and had an okay meal, but generally if something's gone wrong, we tell everybody. And that's just the way humans work. So one of the things that is quite a, a good way of engaging senior people is rather than going to them and saying, I need you to do this or share information with me, um, is ask them what their pain points are. And in your roadmap is see if you can potentially focus on some of those, because if you take away the pain, even if to you it doesn't seem that big a deal, it, but you make it personal for them. So it's not just about the organization but you make it personal to the individual so that's one of the things that i would do with more senior people if you're working with some of your customers or stakeholders or project managers themselves other project managers your peers then engage them make them part of your journey so uh, i'm doing a maturity assessment at the moment and one of the really cool things that they do is their peers so project manager is audited by another project manager so actually they're part of that whole journey regardless of whether it's their project or not so they feel a little bit more connected they feel like it's still partly theirs um and then depending on who your other stakeholders are you know there are lots of different tactics from explain the why why are we doing this project most reasonable human adults are not going to kick you out of the room if you're trying to do something for the right reasons and um, there might be one but then i always say don't expel your energy with that one or two people that you're never going to win around it's 
their issue has nothing to do with you or your project. Um, but yeah, everything from explaining the why to keeping them informed so they know that something's coming as early as possible, even if they don't, we don't have all the information yet. People respect that a lot more. But like I say, treat people like adults. Most reasonable human adults who are educated and professional are not going to kick you out of the room as long as you're saying the right things. Very true. David has said, you said that the tool will tell you if you've answered a question incorrectly. Could you please elaborate? Yeah, so um, let me just go back. <laughs> so hopefully you can see, still see my screen. So with knowledge and experience, there are four potential answers. Um, and it, basically, effectively, you've got to put a Y in one under knowledge and a Y in one under experience. So you can see here, this one's slightly red. It's because I've got three answers. So it's actually going to say to you if you've tried to answer it too many times, um, the idea being that you should have one response in knowledge and one response in experience. Ah, perfect. Thank you. Question here from Andrea. What advice mm -hmm. would you give to someone who is starting the project management journey regarding on what to focus on and how to find opportunities in the industry? Uh, so, first of all, welcome to the madhouse. Um, it's a crazy, brilliant world that we live in. Um, one of the things I would say nowadays is one of the things that I wanted and needed sorely when I first started project management or fell into project management, as I did at the time, um, is get involved. Um, there are loads of different groups on LinkedIn and Twitter and all sorts of other places where people who have been in industry like myself for some time that's all we needed back then when we first started it was somebody to just go can i just bounce this idea off you um and that wasn't available back then because you know people were very much internally focused whereas nowadays people are much more out there trying to help others and there are loads and loads of groups that you can join there are loads of people who you will build your network with who are more than happy to spend time with you uh, just to kind of bounce ideas off. So that would be one of the first things I would absolutely recommend. Um, and we see that by, you know, the fact that people generally nowadays tend to get jobs because of someone they know, because someone in their network, as opposed to the more traditional routes. And it's because of that, because me and lots of my colleagues, we always reflect back and go, oh, it would have been amazing just to have somebody to ask. And that's one of the reasons why at Wellington, we do, you know, we do have a big drive on no sales, like the Dr. PMO. If you wanted to just spend half an hour with me to go, what should my next step be? We're more than happy to give you that because that's what we needed. And we need to live in a world where people are holding each other up um, as opposed to anything else. I really, really respect that. It's a really nice um, value, especially to have as an organization. Mm -hmm. uh, so we do have two more questions currently. Ash has said as a contractor or consultant, they do not tend to get authority. Hence, after allocating action, some will flout their responsibilities, not found a way beyond doing work for them. What's your view on this aspect of all responsibility without any authority? So I used to run my own consultancy, so I've been in that world. And yeah, unfortunately, in many ways, your hands are quite tied in terms of you know your sphere of influence. Um, so for me, I'm I'm of a particular <laughs> personality that I have gone to a senior person and said, you pay me to do this job. This is what I'm expecting from your people. And this is not happening. So kind of, you know, almost jumping and getting that next level of authority to have that grown up conversation. Um, if that doesn't work, I would have a conversation myself. Well, generally, I try to have a conversation myself anyway. But that's the other thing is don't be scared to say, and you know the conversation doesn't have to be you know like a school teacher but it can be you've obviously committed or you knew that we needed to do this therefore if you can't i need you to tell me that you can't i need you to be honest about that and then see if we can work it out together whether it's bringing someone else on board to kind of help them to do that if they are really busy because what we have to remember as consultants is we kind of fly in and everybody's got a day job already so we might be asking them to do extra stuff and a lot of the time people are scared to say no <laughs> not right now thank you very much um so people try to be helpful humans people try to do the best they can and in many organizations that's why projects get done they get done because of sheer the sheer human effort 
Um, so we need to be cognizant of that and we need to work with them to see what blockers they've got in their way to be able to help them to deliver and understand the impact of not delivering. And if you treat it that way, you know, people will generally then give you a different deadline. And that's one of the key tactics is don't ask people how long is it going to take? It's going to take three days. When can you do it by is a better question. It might only be three days of work, but they might not be able to do it for three weeks because of everything else that they've got. So we need to be cognizant of the day jobs um, because we don't take those away from most people. We need to have a grown up conversation, treat them like humans, talk to them like a human, you know, grab a coffee. And maybe it's because I'm from Spain. But we generally do everything over a coffee or food but grab a coffee and find out what's getting in their way and if you're still getting nothing then go to a senior person and you know they will either have a conversation and get them moving or they'll bring someone else in potentially that's great thank you final question um mm -hmm. apparently still time to go so if you do want to put some more questions in please feel free how do you manage dependencies between projects with different project managers at program level is there a tool for that to use so um so at wellington we're a microsoft house so we use microsoft project online uh, or project for the web which allows you to create like a program view with all of the key milestones from underneath so you can see all the dependencies if you don't have and, and most ppm systems will do something similar so whether you're using microsoft and or something else there will be a suite of functionality that is about managing programs and managing those dependencies so you know if i open my project and yours has moved it will tell me this project that project's moved and it's having an impact on yours if you don't have um, a ppm tool because not everybody does um, yet then that's something that i've done before in excel where we keep like um, a central log so excel or sharepoint or something like that where the project managers do then have to come in and say this is when this is expected and or it's late so there is a little bit of duplication um, the other way is to get the pmo to kind of facilitate that so get them to go around and ask the question and find out or disseminate the reporting and the plans on a regular basis um, but if you want real-time stuff then you do need to kind of invest in a ppm tool but there are ways of doing it um, i've seen it done very creatively uh, using you know showing projects with different bubbles that are connected to each other and things like that um, again, something if you wanted to discuss in more detail, um, then, you know, get onto our website and book a 30 minute session with me and I can give you some examples of how I've seen it done before. But generally, if you have a PPM tool, it will have something in there that will help you to do that. Perfect. Thank you. David has said, do you use network diagrams? He's never seen them used in anger in a real project, only in training um yeah no i completely agree it's very rare to see a full-on network diagram um because most people use something like project or an excel project type tool um that kind of does a lot and we're, we're used to using that so uh, i think it's one of those things that best practice is great but best fit practice is we have a different way of looking at things we have a different perspective that everybody kind of recognizes and prefers and if we started to throw in you know network diagrams out there as well it might just confuse the audience we have to consider the audience even that a lot of people nobody outside of project project managers and pmo know how to read gantt charts and yet we still insist on sending them to people uh, which i find hilarious so it's about understanding your audience um i have only ever seen it in two organizations that i've worked with they're both global engineering very process heavy organizations i would say um so you do tend to find them with you know very very analytical cultures um but it's not something that you see that often lauren are you there sorry about that i muted myself no. that's great we haven't got any additional questions at the moment okay but we'll see if any more pop through. David has said, thank you for a great presentation. Thanks, David. <laughs> Felix has said, thanks for the talk. How would you recommend measuring benefits from projects from a junior project manager's point of view? 
First of all, you have to identify your benefits. Um, so decide what they're going to be. Um, we always recommend that you do that at the beginning, so you know what you you know what you're aiming to achieve. Uh, and then one of the key things is understanding. Once you have those benefits, is understanding how are you going to measure them. So sometimes it could be as simple as counting the amount of sessions you've had on Outlook. And other times it might be that you need financial information or you need to do a survey for people. So benefits realization management is a little bit of a dark art. At its simplest form, decide what you're going to do. Decide if you can measure it in a simple way. If you can't, if you're very early on in your benefits career in terms of an organization, then maybe that's not one to measure right now. Uh, but focus on the ones that you can to show the value of, you know, if we do this, and even if we do it at a low level, it's we can still see that we've added some beneficial change to the organization. And just human nature, if you, you almost, we almost have to prove it before people buy into it. But if you do take the simpler stuff, if the harder stuff's going to be really complex for you, measure it in a simple way. Um, we tend to recommend using things like a balanced scorecard to track benefits and things like that. Um, so make it visible. Show people that this is something that you're doing. Um, one of the things project managers and PMOs aren't brilliant at is kind of shouting about the good stuff that we do. We tend to focus on the risk, the issue, the lesson that we've learned. We very rarely say, you know, we did this and it added value to these five people. It might only be five people. But we've changed five people's lives. So if you switch it and look at it that way, then that's one of the ways to get benefits management a little bit more advanced in your organization, whilst at the same time allowing you to kind of cut your teeth on maybe some of the smaller stuff that is more realistic for you specifically. It's a great way to look at it. Mark has commented and he said that he used a network diagram. MS project for the first time last mm -hmm. month. It helped to convey all the dependency in the plan and helped to set up realistic expectations on potential go live dates. So that's really good to hear. Yeah, and I think I think if you're that way inclined, it does work for analytical people and people that want things in a particular visual way. And the beauty of Microsoft Project is that there's like 50,000 views that you can choose from. So I would always say, figure out who your audience is, who's going to be using the data, and then yeah, figure out what's going to work best for them. If you're, you know, if you're pure through and through project managers, a Gantt chart works. If it's a senior person, the timeline at the top is probably all they care about. Mm -hmm. If you have quite analytical people that really want to focus on dependencies, the network di diagram is great. So almost take that best practice and make it fit. Best fit practice is really important. Make it fit your reality so that you haven't got to re-educate people every time you send something out. Completely agree. Yeah, we've had lots of comments saying thank you, incredibly useful, great presentation. I could keep reading, there's lots of them. So mm -hmm. thank you, Emma. It's been a really good session today. Cool. Thanks, Lauren. Thanks yeah. for having me. Um, just another one here. Thank you. Very useful points on emotional intelligence. Uh, we haven't had any more questions come through as yet, but we are getting towards the end of the webinar. So I think maybe you've covered everything. Cool. Great question. Well, yeah, if anybody um, wants to be, get in touch, then please do. Um, you've got my details there, uh, or you can go through the APM as well. That's great. Well, I assume going through lo the lots of thank yous that we've had, that that will probably bring us to a good conclusion of the webinar. So a huge thank you from me.